All right, time to hopefully finish this off. We've got 12% left. Surely, surely we can finish this. Uh, it's been a long, long map. Okay, so we're going to finish with the front. So let's run around the back. It'd be nice if it remembered where you left it. So we can get some easy percentage with the rest of this bit here, at least. Let's jump right in. Um, yeah, we've got this side. We've just got three faces of the pyramid left, basically. But that is 12% of the map, <laughs> because it's a big damn pyramid. And it's barnacle infested. So it's going to take us a while, uh, but we'll work our way down. And we'll do our best to stay awake and not half doze and ramble incoherently. It's been a bit of an exhausting week, even though I took it off work. <laughs> I wanted to do a lot more streaming or speed running and didn't really get around to any of it. Um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Taking a week off one work just to do a lot more on your on a casual, unpaid work doesn't really result in much of a break, so I opted to actually take it easy more than anything. <laughs> Play my way through some stuff on PlayStation instead. One of these days we might hook up a... I need to get a capture card so I could actually do some PlayStation stuff on here. To see if there's anything I want to do first. <coughs> so I was milking percentages at the end of the last one because I wanted to have some progress because I was going from like 84% or something and wanted to do more than just like a couple of percent before I signed off. Unfortunately that means that it's probably gonna take us a while this time to get going. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how long it takes us to rack up anything. At least this bit, the barnacles don't seem to be up here, they're, they're just at the bottom end, whereas the other side looked like it was infested. So we can make some actual progress over here, which is nice. Yeah, they're pretty much only at the gold level. That's great. If only they were all like that. Creeps up to a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. There's a few little kind of splashes as well, which doesn't make much sense given what you're depicting, but. They're either there or they're not, sure. Whoever did the intro bit seemed to have missed the memo about the whole barnacle situation because they seem impervious to clinging to this rock. So from a map design perspective they're a bit inconsistent. You can just say that uh, whoever made the pyramid, the person who painted the main body of it forgot to use the anti-barnacle paint they used on all of this stuff. <laughs> what it seems like. Oh, that's the best way to do it. 
almost done this level, it's taken forever, you're not wrong. It's taken a while. I haven't actually tallied up how many sessions I've put on it so far. Uh, once I've finished and have all of the videos like highlighted and everything, because that way it excludes breaks, but then I'll probably add up all the durations. I think I did that for the subway lot, and there was like... I think the subway was about 10 hours or so. I forget exactly. But this is pushing 20. <laughs> Exam week is now over. Nice. Crazy how that be. It's always weird when you have just school, 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 exams, and then it's like, oh, now what? Yes, we cruise. I get the point of exams, but I always thought that a bit of a balance of that plus just some internal stuff might just take some, have some assignments or whatever that count as well. I don't know. Maybe they do. It always seemed weird that yeah, there would be like a few weeks after exams had finished where you just don't really have anything left to do at school. It's like, can we just go home now? Yay, 89%. We've managed to get a percentage already. Excellent. I'm so glad this bit has some easy to clean stuff on it. I've got like four and a half hours or something that I can spend today on this, so I'm really hoping that that, that should be enough to finish this off, surely. <laughs> Once we do finish it, I don't know what I'm going to do, whether I'll dive straight into just buying everything, just binge at the shop, get everything, and then start the free play straight away. We might. Otherwise, we could pivot and play something else. It depends on how much we do have, how much time we have before um, when I finish for lunch. So I'll be hungry by then. Exams are being pushed back in the hook system. Yeah. Around 10 and above would do exams. Now the first year to do exams around 50. Yeah, that's that's basically the same here. You do tests and stuff um, through intermediate and everything, but you don't really do exams as such. You just do like class tests instead. The exams that actually start to matter here are uh, year 11, which you're usually 15 or 16. So here our years start, uh, you start school usually at 5. Not legally obliged to until 6 apparently, but it's just really normalised that as soon as a kid's 5 you'll get them into school. Alright, now we've got barnacle time. It's Barnacle Time! Welcome, welcome! Some sort of shitty game show. <laughs> I dread to think what that game show would be about, but I'm sure it's Japanese. I started realizing suicide rates happen to go up around exam week. Yeah, see, that shows a deeper problem. Quite frankly, um, it's got nothing to do with whether or not you're doing exams or not. That's much more the culture around the exam and a lack of support for people and probably just it being far too easy for people to do stuff like that these days. I don't know. It seems, yeah, that's not something I've ever understood. So, a bit difficult. 
but yeah, that, that shows a larger problem. Yeah, maybe make sure that kids realize that exams are not the be-all and end-all. There's certainly more to life than failing an exam. <laughs> and if people can't see that, then clearly we're not teaching them well enough about what there is about life. <laughs> Just this overemphasis on academics in general, which is a bit of an issue. Don't get me wrong, academics is useful, but not the end of the world if you're not that great at it. The thing I really hate about just exam culture in general is how it's just a one and done. Like, okay, you sit an exam, you stress about the, getting the results, you pass or fail, and then that's it. And it's like your whole year, or most of a year has led up to that. It's like, well, that's not realistic. That's not how life generally works. If I do something at my job and get it a bit wrong, it'll get picked up in review and you get a chance to fix it, even if it doesn't get picked up in review and it goes all the way to production without it actually being fixed, which has happened before. You get a chance to improve on it and do better the next time, right? It's, yeah. If you're gonna have exams, by all means, but then have the chance a month later to show, okay, you, you get your results back Okay, you didn't manage to do this, 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 and this. These are the skills that you need to improve upon. We're then going to follow up with another one in a month's time, and you get the chance to show, okay, well, I've actually learned. I guess that's the whole idea with, like, um, doing mocks and stuff in, in advance, so maybe that happens still, but... Also just closed book exams I hate. Like in real life you can refer to things. You can just Google stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't allow people to use their computers necessarily, so you're trying to know that they understand the fundamentals, but you should be able to use your textbook to refer and go, oh okay, here we go. It shouldn't be a memory test. Because yeah, very few places does that matter. Sometimes, yeah, you have to remember and react in the moment, but not in an academic course. <laughs> if you're doing a physics equation or something for a paper, yeah, funnily enough, you, you get to refer to your notes. <laughs> remember when you did the subway casually, starting at fine ending it very drowsy? Yeah, <laughs> do the whole thing one sitting. That's what I did the first time, I believe. Um, back when it was still in early access, I did the subway, I think, in one sitting. Maybe I did have to split it up. I thought it was in one shot. And yeah, it got, got tedious really quickly. The important thing with that one, to me, was doing it one tunnel, other tunnel, and then the middle. That's how I tackled it this time with the basic washer anyway. Because otherwise, if you're finishing off with just one of the tunnels, then it's just so big and boring. Huh. I didn't think that I'd already done the other side of that, but I guess I had. Cool. That's good. <laughs> so I, I thought I still had the other side left. Uh, why am I pressing C instead of control? Oops. Bath subway and bathroom in one sitting. Ugh, the bathroom is horrific. I hate that little... Glutton for punishment, that's for sure. Okay. The subway and the bathroom are both examples of levels that are about twice as big as they need to be. Like, the fact that the bathroom has two wings to it, and you think, why? Clearly it's not men's and ladies, because there's urinals on both sides. It's weird. It's like, why, why is there two 
entrances. Why is it a double headed bathroom? This should just be one thing. So if it was half the size it was, it wouldn't be nearly as bad. Same with the subway, it could just be one one track, or like one tunnel that has both tracks and platforms either side, instead of being central platform. It could also just not be as long. <laughs> also felt like it was much taller than it needed to be to accommodate a train on this scale. It's like this one as well, right? You've got however many bricks tall the lower level is. You wouldn't really miss it if there was a few missing and it was a few layers shorter. Like, it would still be really tall and really impressive. It just wouldn't be as much surface area. <laughs> Why am I cleaning in a game when I can clean my own home? Why do I have 200 hours in it? This is much more relaxing than cleaning your own home. Also, I don't own a giant stone pyramid, I don't know about you, um, so <laughs> there's the aspect of cleaning different things and different environment and everything. I mean, I did a load of dishes before I started this, so I'm feeling pretty good about my own cleanliness today. <laughs> We've done something. Done some dishes. Later, I might even put away some washing. I, I might fold my laundry. Shocking, I know. The key point with those is much like this. I've, I've got some music on in the background to accompany the, these efforts. Make sure that if you're doing dishes, chuck some music on. If you're folding laundry, do it in front of the TV with something on. You know, anytime, if you're going to be otherwise idle, that's when you do your chores. Because that way, you're watching something, you're enjoying something, and you're doing something useful. So just combine some things together. It makes it so much easier to get things done. Or like idle time while you're waiting for other things, like I was doing washing dishes while waiting for the jug to boil for my coffee and waiting for my toast to be in the toaster. You know, you've got a few minutes that you can do things here and there while you're waiting for other things to happen. Now, it can also be important to just zone out, but it's not like it's mentally demanding to wash dishes, so... Kind of two birds or three birds, one stone, really. You're getting some, some mental time... You're getting some stuff done, and you're waiting for something to to finish. It's honestly very similar to like speedrunner mentality of trying to economize things and um, to do as much things all at the same time as you can. And yeah, it's a very useful skill to bring into real life. Turn into stone pyramid? That's a huge problem. I know, right? <laughs> Maybe one day. Something to aspire to. Yeah, you gotta have aspirations in life. You still listen to music or doing you dug a knife quarter of an inch into your thumb because you've been paying attention and look. Okay, now that's a you problem. That that sounds like a skill issue, I'm afraid. Just because you're listening to music doesn't mean to say you can go completely absent. I mean, why sharp knives? We clean them straight after using them, pretty much. So it's like we don't be using them to chop stuff or for cooking and things. I will immediately rinse the knife, put it away, like rinse it, dry it, put it away, so I'm not doing anything else at the same time. For that one, that's, that, that is a useful kind of thing to pay attention to. Can I reach here, I mean, it's like, can I reach it without the extra long extension? 
I have the extra long extension. Why would I bother? Let's just do it with it. <laughs> Seeing if I can do this without the scaffold on the side now. I brought the scaffold round. But it's just a faff to go up the levels and stuff all the time. It doesn't really help too much. You do get a much cleaner angle, which does help, but meh. This seems to be working. If I have to climb it up to, to get a better view because something hasn't dinged, then so be it. I didn't do this side. Interesting. Ah, oh, it's sectioned off by that bit there. Gotcha. That's good. Does that mean I actually got a ding on the other side? That's nice. I wasn't expecting it. Hey, 90% done. Excellent. Skill issue, yes. Many things in life are skill issues. We don't have a nice handy experience bar and like talent point upgrades and stuff in real life, but it's still a bit of an RPG, you know. Who do we have here? Hello! Hello. We have the master of your imagination. <laughs> I've cooked using oil for most all of my life. When burning hot oil jumps out of the pan and lands on me, I no longer feel it. Um, that sounds bad. If it's landing on you in a place that you've got calluses and stuff, though, then you just won't have nerves in that spot anymore, but... I'm not imagining you as this just massive scars. I don't know, I cook with oil, but it generally doesn't jump out and spit at me. Does it ever remind me of Simulica this reason? Right? so true i want them to do a crossover i was talking about it another time it's like i i feel that a crossover between this and subnautica would be really cool because the visual style is really similar but i don't know what they'd do <laughs> clean the degacy bases that are already underwater uh <laughs> the aurora's a bit big the sunbeams you know clean the qep could be fun you could start by just cleaning the life pod. Maybe you're at like an Altera facility where they've got some replica things, kind of like what they did for the Final Fantasy stuff. So you clean the life pod. Maybe you have a vehicle hall where you've got a prawn suit. You've got a sea moth on display. You've got a cyclops. Maybe you have a Neptune somewhere. Scale model Reaper perhaps would be fun. Most epic music overpowers them. I know. I love it. Yeah, this is epic stuff. This is we're saving the world here. According to the lore anyway, which I've been barely paying attention to. Six years of McDonald's. Yeah, that that would definitely make give you an immunity to oil damage. As you just missed the little passive buff that popped up, um, that you now have immunity to oil splash damage. That, that's, that's one of your perks now. Cleaning the entire planet, yeah. Oh, and you could uh, work in some BZ stuff, so you could like clean Marguerite's greenhouse, or clean the Sector Zero base from below zero, like before it got destroyed. Things like that. <laughs> Clean the face gate. <laughs> so yeah, they de definitely could do it. If they... I'd be, I'd be happy with whatever levels. That would just be a fun tie-in. So they've got the Final Fantasy one. They've got the Tomb Raider one. They're coming out with a Spongebob one. Which is... Absurd. Delightfully absurd. Uh, we need this to be able to pick this up. I need a, an angle on the side of that alcove. Ask the devs to add in any place in the real world what would you ask to be added? That is a good question. Hmm. It's like, what sort of landmark would I want to clean? The Louvre could be fun. It would just be a glass pyramid, but it would be at least simplistic. I don't know. That is a very good question. Preferably something something with lots of bits but not too many bits game 
ages ago couldn't get into it. Yeah. I can understand why people couldn't get into it, because it is a very laid-back experience. It's a bit too laid-back. You've got to really bring to it what you want to bring to it. You've just got to... At the end of it all, you've really got to enjoy the process of what dirty thing become clean, because that's what it's all about. <laughs> I think of it as a bit of a logic puzzle as well, in terms of the pieces that I'm trying to clean, the order that I'm doing in, the angles that I'm attacking them in. So it becomes a little bit of a brain teaser like that. So that keeps it interesting, and then it's a case of just executing it, and executing it is make dirty thing clean. <laughs> And if you're not gonna, if you if you can't enjoy that feedback loop, then that's not gonna be your game. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Get stoned on and play it for a few hours. Yeah, that I could see that. Yeah, you could totally space out on this. In the real world, every time I learned a new skill, a massive sound effect followed by fireworks. You mean that doesn't happen for you? Wow, sad. I get that all the time. Now you just got to be the master of your own game in that. <clears throat> you know, you do something that you think is cool. Just give your own little victory. You know. Da -da 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 -da. Give yourself a little flourish. You know. Live a lot. Celebrate your success. Doesn't matter if people think you're a goober for doing it. That's on them. For not having fun. Just, you know. Contextually. Yeah, if you're a pallbearer and you successfully deliver the coffin into the hearse, then yeah, maybe you you hold back on that. You know, you don't go, a skill unlocked. No, let's keep that one internal. But, uh... Successfully folded the laundry pile. 100 XP! Yeah. Celebrate your own successes in your own way. Bring joy into your life. Like making clean things dirty, oh my. <laughs> See you more on the Splatoon train. <laughs> I mean, that is very much something that they could also do in this game, is have a pack where it's all inverted and you're painting things. It's like power painting. I mean, that's basically what you do in House Flipper paint rooms and stuff Simply, yeah there you go <laughs> literally just did your laundry didn't get xp no you probably did you just didn't realize it you just didn't hit the level that's all but you, you know, you're always getting that xp towards it i'm constantly trying to find more efficient ways of doing the laundry like not only in accompanying by doing other things at the same time but just try folding a shirt a different way or something more efficient ways of pairing socks i try and do that straight off the line if i can but if they've been in the dryer obviously that doesn't work it's just li little gains here and there imagine a 1v1 challenge where one player makes things dirty and a different player to make things clean yes that sounds good <laughs> yes please make it happen <laughs> i wouldn't play it i'm not into pvp but that would be hilarious I wonder how you'd start that though because you'd never be able to completely succeed so you just have to have like a threshold so maybe it starts at 50% clean and the person making it dirty has to hit 60% dirty or 66% dirty and the person cleaning has to hit 33% clean something like that That's how I play you. <laughs> Please don't play me. You can play as me. As that. I'll be an avatar in the game. I, I very rarely do any multiplayer stuff, and if I do, it's usually co op if I can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the Splatoon rules are. I've seen it played, I've seen it speedrun um, in terms of the campaign. But I assume that it's something like that, where it's, yeah, a certain proportion has to be, has to be clean or dirty, has to be a certain colour. 
undo the entire campaign. That would be fun. You, you like do the whole campaign and then you unlock the, cam the next campaign mode where you're just going through and just caking it with stuff. You could either do it where you're just painting things, which I, th I think the, the best way of doing it would just be a painting game. But if you did like a paint by numbers, where you actually chose the different dirt types and sprayed them on, so you've got like a certain area, like all of this would be highlighted as barnacle. So you, you choose your barnacle gun <laughs> and just paste, paste barnacles to everything. That would be funny. You actually have to replicate the level in reverse. That would be great. I mean, that's just an opportunity for someone to... Oh, yeah. Honestly, it's the sort of thing that if you could think of it, there's probably a game on Steam for it already. Quite frankly, at this point. But it's an opening for someone who wants to get a little bit of experience with Unreal or something to just make a painting simulator. <laughs> Have the higher percentage painted, yeah. It'd be a case of if you have it higher for a certain amount of time or something, then maybe you get a point and then the points rack up. You do it like uh, domination style. Is the longest route in ETS 2 still Aberdeen to Istanbul? Yes. We have not added any further. Uh, few enough people are interested in doing a run that long in the first place for us to care about adding more at this point. And it's Istanbul to Aberdeen. Because we realised that doing Aberdeen to Istanbul, the first half of it is basically exactly the same as Aberdeen to Bratislava, so it's not very interesting. Um, at least until we get some different ferry routes available after they release Baltics. Um, yeah, so it's reversed, so you go from Istanbul to Aberdeen, so that way when you're doing that final stretch, you can't use the same warp points in RTA as you would going north, uh, going south rather. Uh, and yeah, you have to drive the other way on some of those roads, which is a little bit more interesting. It's also interesting the fact that then you've got the twisty little dangerous country roads at the end of such a long run. So dangerous. As opposed to just cruising on motorways to your destination. So that, that puts a bit of a twist on it that... Because from Aberdeen to Bratislava, you've got all the twisty UK country roads first. It's like, okay, cool. Now that's done. Now it's just motorway cruising. Sweet. I can relax. Nope. <laughs> Not the other way around. <laughs> it is a little bit brutal, um, which is probably one of the reasons not many people have done it, but also just the length lets people off. I do want to do that again at some point, but I don't have the time available to do it. I could be doing something like that today, to be honest. Daughter doesn't care today, so picking her up this afternoon, so technically I have the time to do that, but my brain is too fried from this week to really do that, so... A game in Steam where you can watch paint dry, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a fun one. Longer route between the... Oh, there would be, yeah, there, there definitely are longer possibilities, but we have not codified it in a run. Um, yeah, there just hasn't really been the interest. You could do Portugal, yeah, to Russia. Would I think I worked out, I can't remember, is it Olhau, I think, up to St. Petersburg, or up to Vyborg, would be Olhau to Vyborg, would be the longest. But yeah, it's a case of, cool, that's going to take me like two hours. Doesn't seem like fun. <laughs> And again, that would be kind of a bit, a bit more interesting, though, because it would go the opposite way to a lot of the... You know, you got Tempe and Catania going north to south. So having one that goes from the southeast up to the northwest would be good, because it would cross a lot of those current paths, so you wouldn't be able to reuse things as easily. You'd honestly ferry hop most of the way there, probably. Like, if you 
drove up to the north of Spain, you can ferry hop up to the UK and from there you can get across to Scandinavia. And so I think RTA at least, it would just be Ferry Madness, which is fun. It is one of those things, it's like it's been talked about, no one's done it to demonstrate it. We're not going to put an empty board up for the sake of it. I then don't feel too great about just doing something and putting a thing up and being the only person who's run it. That doesn't, that seems a little bit self-serving, but... ATS it would be Brownsville to Bellingham, Stads and down Texas I guess, yeah. Same problem, like we've had people suggest new routes for ATS as well, but never accompany them with a demonstration and it's like well again I'm not just going to throw something up and then have someone submit a five hour run and go ha ha free world record because that's happened before they had one of the like new profile runs it's like oh it's a free world record and the run that got submitted was just taking the piss that was very annoying So yeah, I'm, I'm quite wary for that sort of game, especially where it is a fairly low effort game to get into. Like if you just want to drive from X to Y, you can do that very easily. And I respect if people do that genuinely, if they're genuinely trying to just, okay, I, this is how far I've gotten in the campaign, like in the career. I just want to do this. I know it's not going to be the fastest, but it's going to be enjoyable good on you that is the spirit of speedrunning right there that's great i don't want everyone to be just making sure they've got the best stuff and taking it uber seriously but i also don't want you just leaving the keyboard for five minutes to go warm up some tacos in the microwave that's not cool either <laughs> yeah it doesn't mean anything else if no one does the run you say that but the number of people who there, there are legitimately people who will go hunting on speedrun.com for games that runs that don't have submissions just do something half-assed because then it looks great on their profile to have lots of first places that, that is genuinely something people do and fair enough you know i respect the hustle to an extent if it is done with at least a bit of genuine effort, I respect it. Warm up taco in the oh yeah. Tasks folding between your office left. Yeah, my office is a bit of a mess. I need to get more shelves. I need some shelves up here behind where I sit to put some stuff on. I just have not got my arse into gear. It's a case of then whether I fix them to the wall, or we'll make some freestanding ones, I, I don't know, but, yeah, just need a pull finger at some point. There is pizza percent. That probably exists in many games. There's also Pizza Tower, which is a hilarious game to watch played. They did a speedrun on it, a GDQ. They also did a first step episode on it. It's hilarious. It's pizza time! Disqualify you add pineapples? No. That would be an, just an ad, added perk. I like pineapple pizza. I don't usually have it, to be fair. I usually just have meat lovers, but I don't mind it. Context matters. It's, it's what toppings you're putting it with. I mean, sweet and sour sauce is the thing, right? And that is mostly pineapple. Pineapple juice. So you do it with the same sort of toppings as you'd have with sweet and sour sauce. Some chicken meat. I had a very bad day. Got haircut, got food, took a bath. Treat yourself. Be the king that you want to be. You never need an excuse to pamper yourself when you get home from a hard day at work. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Not just a piece of I mean, that's fair. It's very tart. You either get it at the point that it's still quite sour, and in which case it's very much not for everyone, or it becomes very, like, oversweet very quickly too, which is also not for everyone. 
It's also a type of bromeliad, if I remember rightly, which means that the enzyme, enzymes in it are trying to eat you as you eat it. So, you know, not for everyone. Uh, I think there's a sort of thing that people can be quite intolerant to as well. I know if I have too much of it at once, it will give me, like, mouth blisters, so, yeah. <laughs> always loved life, always hated it. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Sibling rivalry to, to a T. My brother liked peanut butter, and I don't. You know. <laughs> I'll take Nutella any day. Absolutely love watermelon. I find watermelon very nothing. It does not have much flavor. I mean, it's mostly water. It's the name. It's like water with a bitter aftertaste. Like, eh. Not a fan. Don't know. Don't. Did pineapples kill your family or something? <laughs> yeah, some people just get irrationally protective of the food that they like being the way they like it and not liking variation. It's strange. But it's your pizza. Do what you like on it. Some combinations are objectively just not kind of culinarily complementary, I guess you could say. You know, certain taste combinations just will not work properly for human taste buds. That is a fact. But some people like that sort of conflicting result. So who's to say? You know, go for it. <laughs> you want licorice and maple syrup on your pizza, then go for it. <laughs> Eating things that try to hurt you. <laughs> Citric acid, I'll probably love it. Yeah, I used to love that sort of thing. I, I loved sour things back when I was a kid. I still do like them to an extent. I'm not a fan of the ones that are just super sour, like, all you can taste is just the, the, the acid. It's like, and no. I want a bit of flavour in there too. I don't mind if that flavour is tangy. I love the RJ's Fabulicious, get the grape ones with the nerds in it, those are great. But it's gotta have some depth to it, it can't just be one. It's like spicy foods as well, the, the sorts of people who put super hot sauce on things and all it is is just but there's no actual flavour. It's just capsaicin. It's like, no. Nah. Why? The other thing is that as I've gotten older, I've just got more indigestion issues. So, you know, <laughs> something too spicy or something too sour and my body will hate me for like the next six hours. So, you know. <laughs> People who eat chocolate pizza. Dessert pizza is a 100% legitimate thing. Like, you can do a dessert pizza with chocolate and banana or something. Again, context. It's, it's all context. It's what are you having with it. If you're having chocolate sauce drivelled over pepperoni, something is wrong with you. It's as simple as that. You know, go for it. I don't care, but something is wrong with you. <laughs> Feelings eating cold watermelon on a 30 degree day. 30 to me is not desperately hot, but yeah, that's getting up there. Um, I'll have We have a thing over here called a fruju, which is a ice block. So it's like frozen fruit juice on a stick. Yeah, I'll have one of those. And they have flavors like strawberry and lime. If you like the citric acid, strawberry and lime, great flavor. There is a pineapple flavor. Um, there's also orange, there's a... Uh... They did do a, another lime one, but I can't remember what it was now. But yeah, great thing. Die if it goes over 25 degrees, yeah. I mean, anything over 25 degrees definitely starts getting unpleasant, especially if it's humid. That's for damn sure. Humidity is the, the real life sucker, not the heat itself. And yeah, obviously, it depends what you used to. That is a thing that i um, got friends over in the UK and, as they were saying, are struggling with the heat simply because 
houses and stuff over there are designed to keep you warm in winter. <laughs> which means that the heat just gets trapped in the house. Which is a problem with any well insulated property. Like modern insulation, like fiberglass insulation and stuff. It's really good. Except if the house gets hot, it can't cool down. <laughs> and that is an issue. So the Canada, yeah, unreliably cold and then unreliably hot. Yeah. Yeah, you get the two extremes. Not a fan of those. It's like Canterbury down in the South Island. They get, like, they can get snow in winter, but then they'll be 32, 33 degrees heat in summer. No thanks. Yeah, Netherlands must get quite humid, I suspect, with all the waterways and stuff around. So that would be brutal. We've got super good heaters and AC units. Yeah, we have heat pumps uh, over here. So like reverse cycle heat pumps so they can do heating and cooling. They uh, get their efficiency from heat differential. So if it's cold outside, it'll be more efficient to warm up inside. Heat exchange units are really good. I've got one in my office. Like I've got one put in for in here. Because if I have the door closed for meetings and stuff in summer, it gets weltering in here. But they're not cheap. Not everyone has them. It's just a case of if you do have a really well insulated house and it's gotten quite hot, then as soon as it starts cooling down outside, you need to vent it. Have fans facing out, not in. Blow the hot air out of the house. You gotta treat it like a, your house is like a computer case. That's how I think of it. Think of it like a computer case. You have lots of things producing heat inside if the ambient temperature outside is cooler than what it is inside you need to both bring air into the environment but also you need to exhaust the hot air the best thing you can do is actively exhaust the hot air so that way the cooler air will passively find its way in every year find new spots to sweat from that's a mood i'm a I am a sweaty boy. <laughs> yeah. I will walk for five minutes and I will be Niagara. Uh, it's not right. How's this like in case I'm the GPU who's being abused? Yeah. Basically, we are the greatest producer of heat generally. I mean, obviously, if you're cooking or something, the stove will overtake you, but. Humans put off a decent amount of heat. Ding! Finally, 91%. What are we up to for time? 49 minutes. That's not bad. And the sun with friends the other day and sweating so much? Yeah. I mean, that's your body trying to cool you down, right? If you're in the sun, there's your problem. Stay in the shade. <laughs> Quick coffee sip. Okay. So that's pretty good. So yeah, 49 minutes. I thought that was going to take me more like an hour, so that's cool. Let's do the rinse cycle on this entire face. So unfortunately this one is not split up or anything. This is just one huge big piece of pyramid. So this is going to take a while. Um, be interesting to see where the barnacles start. Can we turn the sun off? I know we're dying stuff, but like for a few seconds. Yeah. So just, just a little, you know, timeshare, you know, my turn to turn the sun off for a few minutes. Let's put some more ozone in the ozone layer. Oh god, the barnacles go all the way up. It's like a model's legs. This, this is bad. Came by boat and I joined them by boat. At such, that's probably the most... Dutch saying that you could have. So, uh, my friends came by boat, so I met them on my bike. Like that is, yeah. <laughs> you make it better. Were you wearing clogs? <laughs> Did you meet by a windmill? <laughs> by the time you joined them, it was smoking weed. Okay, yep. That also that. <laughs> Water. 
Okay. That's an odd question. It goes above 10 degrees Celsius and AC built in, built in, yeah. Basically all new houses here will now have a uh, heat pump installed in like the living areas at the very least. And usually some sort of distributed ventilation system through the different rooms and everything. Drinking fine, swimming hell no. Yeah, I agree. Swimming in lakes and rivers? Don't mind it. It's alright. Not a fan of the water generally. I can I can adequately swim. I can keep myself afloat. I'm not bad at it. My main problem is I get really cold really easily. I have very surface veins on my arms, so I just get unreasonably cold very quickly when I'm in water. So I'll start shivering. The water could be 30 degrees and I'll start shivering. Swimming in the sea? No. That's the worst. I would rather be on a kayak on a lake. That That's my idea of enjoying the water. Being on top of it. <laughs> Coasting along. easily yeah fair enough yeah I'm not a fan of that either yeah stereotype how the Dutch hate water huh <laughs> okay don't hate it yeah I wouldn't have thought many people hate water it kind of keeps you alive but maybe dislike the fact that it's such a threat and that uh, everyone else seems intent on flooding your country by making sea levels rise. That that would be the source of hatred, I feel. See, these sections I really like because I'm just able to spray the hell out of these Blocks. and hey they're clean and then we get to the barns and all the fun stops 50 years or so your country will be gone yeah <laughs> i think projections would be a little bit longer than that but you just never know i mean you've got places like china and india that are developing faster and faster and doing very little about their emissions so yeah And you've got developed nations that should know better, also doing very little about their emissions as well, so... It's not great. We live to have a while to escape and stuff, yeah. I mean, it would be a slow rise, generally, but... We do also have to look out for increasing storm systems, like we had a really bad cyclone hit over here a few months ago and completely pummeled some parts of the country and it was hard not to well maybe not laugh but it was hard to have sympathy for some people where there was a new subdivision put in that's basically at sea level and it's also on a floodplain and they built a subdivision lot and then we had a really bad cyclone with heavy rain guess what that subdivision flooded wow what a shock who could have seen that come you buy a house in an inundation zone yeah better put it on stilts it's chilling all unless you're me gives you cramps ah oh, yeah ah increase your dpi yes <laughs> I don't actually have my DPI up all that high. It's probably on like 400 or something. I just twitch my wrist back and forth a little bit. I don't have to do much. Once you settle into a rhythm, the key is developing a rhythm and not making all of your motions intentional. Like you just flick it back and forth, just a gentle sway. It's like you're coloring something in or just doing some shading with a pencil. That's all it is. 
don't try and do two large emotions all at once that's why i'm doing it like this instead of like trying to do all the way across like this right because that's a lot more movement so that's a lot more exhausting little bits at a time i'll section things up and just do a little column here and there similarly i could swap it like this and then just do a little bit of up down like this i find that a little bit more awkward but it's also very small it's much more micro movement so it's it's really handy with these bricks that i can just do it a brick at a time and that's actually a really good size also just make sure that you're not resting your wrist directly on anything make sure you've got a good grip on your mouse make sure you've got a mouse that's a good size for your hands all these little things like that they all add up uh, but even then i still do get cramped must be said <laughs> that's why i try and take breaks every now and then the aim mode is a godsend for this game that's for sure rather than having it on like if i was doing this otherwise i would be doing this and that just makes me dizzy or you just have to go really slowly instead we don't go slowly in games this is <laughs> i may not be technically speed running this but i'm also not going slowly give me arthritis in your wrist yeah probably i've been finding my fingers mostly the problem i'll get cramping my actual fingers probably developing arthritis my mum has, so that's something I've got to look out for. Take your fish oil tablets, some glucosamine or something. You just go stop and stretch and exercise every now and then as well, just to try and keep that flexibility going. So do some, do some quick stretches. Just yeah, stretch back, stretch back. Just pray to iron jesus for a bit you know. just little things you know anything is better than nothing when it comes to just stretching things out for the a mode yeah i questioned the a mode when it first came out and then after trying it i'm like how did i play this game without using this <laughs> If I go back to my old, like, early, early access uh, videos before they added it and try and watch them now, it's almost nauseating, which is why they added it. And you wonder, how the hell did I do this? I mean, it was very much a case of just doing it slowly. It was just like, you kind of don't do it too fast because you can't. Otherwise, you'd give yourself an aneurysm. Okay, well we're at 92%, which is nice. I was going to do the whole rinse cycle of this wall, but I think I'm just going to take a bit of a break at this point. We've got, yeah, 92% is good, that's 4% progress. We've got the rinse cycle on this wall like half done, which is nice. The next session is going to be this entire wall pretty much, especially with all these barnacles going all the way up. I'm going to take a quick break. Have a bit more of a drink, have a bit more of a stretch, stand up, stretch my back out. I suggest you do the same. And uh, yeah, I'll leave the music running. Enjoy the playful tunes of Skellige, and I'll be back shortly.